the open casting is so harmful? It's because the effects on health are very, very direct and dire. Now, <clears throat> there's been studies done in, New, in um, New South Wales in the Hunter. There's been studies done in Wales and Scotland and England and in West Virginia in America. And Dr. Hendricks in West Virginia has found that the cost to health and early deaths is far greater than the value of the coal. Yet the New South Wales government is just relying on a bit of small royalties which they then use for better roads to the mines and railway lines to the mines and there's no money left to pay the health bill or the wrecking of the social life of everyone else in the firing line. Now this is totally stupid again, isn't it? Yes. Now what are the effects? You have to understand that when you get bulldozers churning up the ground there's particles thrown up of all sizes. The very big ones fall off early the medium ones get your washing dirty or your windows dirty and the, the next lot drop off and the size that actually gets in the lungs is the finest ones which are called PM2.5 and, and PM1s. The trouble is the government and the mining companies are only measuring PM10s which do not go in your lungs. They have no effects on health at all and it's all a confidence trick for them saying it's okay. Well, I don't care what the PM2 and R levels are because they're totally separate and different from the levels of the particles they get in your lungs. In Brighton, in England, where some people died, the people clamoured to the council to go and monitor the four bulldozers that were working below the ground, about 50 foot down, in a small redevelopment site. And I managed to get hold of the actual measurements. And the PM2 and a were 163 micrograms per cubic metre weekly average and the PM1's 253 micrograms, total over 400, when the safe limit's only 7. It's no wonder people were dying. And in the Hunter Valley, the miners themselves are dying aged 61. So there's two problems with open casting. One is the, the finer particles of the coal and silica and overburden thrown up which is in that size range of PM2 and R from 1, that's microns, which do get in the lungs. And the second problem is the fuel being used by the bulldozers and the emissions therefrom. Because they're using, obviously, substandard fuel in English, as in England, it's now called hazardous waste by the European Directive and was taxed as such. And here they're, they're paying, perhaps in the order of 35 cents a litre, when if they use proper high quality road diesel, it would be somewhere near 95 cents a litre. That gives you an idea about quality. The trouble is when you use inferior quality diesel, you get huge numbers of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs for short, and even heavy metals, and other contaminants like PCBs if they're using old entinols to mix in with it and the PCBs cause cancer of the pancreas, which they've got <coughs> quite a few of around Hunter. Now, the PHs I'll discuss first. They get in the bottom of your lungs with the particles, and for the women who are pregnant, they make the babies smaller, so you get low birth weight babies because they can't develop properly, nor can their lungs develop, nor can their brains develop properly, so you get a drop in IQ in direct proportion to the level of these chemicals. So that means the children are less bright when they're born. And if you look at the exam results, which is a good indicator, in the primary schools, as was published for New South Wales on Monday this week, you'll find that for those children in schools by the open cast mines, their actual performance figures out of 2,000 uh, levels was down around the 1,600 to 1,900, in other words, the bottom 10%. And they even published so-called socio-economic uh, figures, which aren't relevant, but I'm using them because that's what the government quotes. And if you look at schools with equivalent socio-economic levels clear in the mines, they're way up in the top half of the results. School after school after school, we looked at some 15 already, I just need a list of the rest. And this is because the IQ, the IQ is dropped due to these PAHs. 
Now the pH is also mess up your genes, causing a change in gene function that happens in the lungs, which sets up asthma in children. That's working. When in Telford, in England, they converted a power station, just like the ones in the Hunter, to burning waste, just like the Hunter. The actual asthma rate, clear of it, was 1.9%, but downwind of it was between 24 and 100% because everything adds up. And in Telford, my colleague and I have got nine different types of health all mapped out, and the death rate went up two and a half times around the power station, and the rate of depression went up nine times, so the suicides went up, and we got 104 suicides along the belt. So that means you have to be very choosy, and there should be a moratorium to sort out, first of all, health maps, and then work out the public health policy, which is what the World Health Organization and the US EPA have been doing since 1997, and here they seem to still live in the distant Middle Ages. Because the American government knew about PM1s back in 1943. Doesn't seem as anyone's heard of them here. Why is it that the government will not put in the correct monitors to measure what's actually going in your lungs, which is the PM2 and ups and ones? After a lot of complaints after my last visit, some 16 months ago, they got one monitor in Singleton now, in the Hunter Valley. But there's two types of monitors you can get. One is the accurate factory set, one accurate to 1%, which gives you true readings, no matter what. The other one is like your bathroom scales, with it got a little screw on. So any ladies or gents who happen to be overweight can easily turn it around so if you're suddenly two stone lighter. But this is what the governments are doing to the people in Singleton, telling them it's all right, when they can easily turn the switch and make it minus. And in England, they're reading for minus 110 in some places, when the vacuum's zero. This just shows the corruption among the public health doctors and politicians. So together and I suggest that one of the groups somewhere or flooding together gets one decent factory sealed monitor from Germany and then you can get proper readings proving how bad it really is or you can get an Osiris one from England which measures PM1s and two and a half and when you get proper readings over a period of time you can swap the monitors around from field to field to field group to group to group and that way we share the cost out then you'll have hard evidence plus the health evidence proving the connection, the science proves the connection, the health data backs it up, and the monitors prove that you have, the, have an order that it would happen. So that's total proof. Then you run personal injury cases in a group, and you couldn't, if you had me speaking, you probably couldn't lose. <laughs> because there was a court case in America and Virginia two years ago where the attorney was stuck with a bad consultant's report and he asked me to sort it out, so I sent a report. Three weeks later, the company paid up. Unless you have the right solicitors and the right expert witness and the right data proving a connection, you can't win. But once there's a case won, then the whole game is up. The politicians will have to take notice. Otherwise, they could be sued next. There's another angle I'm pursuing which is as if, have the states really got the rights, the mining rights, from the Crown? Because if these weren't signed, I thought that they might or may not have been signed over to the federal government in 1901. If they weren't, the state has no rights whatsoever, even if it was delegated by the federal government. That would stop all this nonsense overnight. <laughs>